Good morning, everybody. Welcome to day four. Day four of reading the Bible in the year 2021. And uh, we're starting on a 12-day journey uh, looking at Job. Now, the reason that the book of Job um, is inserted in this place in the chronological reading is because we understand that Job was written around the time of, of Abraham uh, near the land of the Chaldeans. And it is a really uh, fantastic, I don't know if you'd say expose, but it, um, it, it takes the temperature of the time and lets us know what they knew about the creator. Uh, because uh, we, we know that the, the worship of the creator uh, was pretty prevalent. Um, but it is the, it is the fact that, that he is um, so unknown that uh, try, some tried to, to define him in the form of idols and, and such, and, and they ended up making up their, their own gods and, and such. So um, it's really important that we, we look at this and, and we understand, you know, so that we can understand even the mindset of, of Abraham who we're going to be looking at when we come back to, to Genesis. And I do want to apologize for the length of yesterday's video. Uh, it got away on me and I am planning on not letting that happen again. Um, I don't know if you could appreciate it or not, but I could, I could uh, teach all day. Uh, this is, this is my calling in my life, but I have to remember that somebody needs to listen to it. So I'm going to try to keep it within the time frame of what we talked about before about 15 minutes or so. Uh, so let's let's get into Job now, and uh, we're we're gonna we're gonna learn some things here about how people saw things. Uh, there, there's a lot of things that we could take away uh, from Job, but we we're gonna use our our 12 days spending with Job just to come to an understanding of of how the how the people saw the Creator at this time. Um, their, their knowledge of him was limited. He's only the creator. That, that's all we know. Um, he, he will eventually raise up a nation to reveal himself to the world uh, so that he, he would receive the glory. But at this moment, it's, what we know is, is, is very little bit about him. Going forward, you may have a lot of questions about Job, and there's there's going to be some side things, some side lessons that we're going to learn, but we're not going to focus too much upon those, although we may, may highlight them as we go. But the thing I want you to keep in mind as we go through this, the, the problem with Job's friends was not that they had bad advice. In fact, many of the things that they say are absolutely true. And in any other circumstance would be considered very wise, uh, very insightful. Uh, but in this situation, they didn't have the full story. They, they, so this was good advice that was being applied to the wrong problem. So keep that in mind as we go forward, because some people would scratch their head and say, well, yeah, I, I agree with this. Yes, agree with it. But you've got to remember that Job was innocent all the way through this. Job is sitting in a place of innocent where they're applying this as if Job had offended God, Job had sinned in some way, Job had done something wrong. Now, that can be our first takeaway from this. Uh, an early takeaway can be that only God is able to judge because he is the only one with all the information and understanding. Keep that in mind. Um, and it's, it's one of the reasons why Jesus told us, I uh, be careful, don't... Uh, don't don't be so concerned about the speck in your brother's eye um, when you've got a, a tree grown out of your own. You know, that's uh, take care of that tree. Okay, take care of, of where you are. Okay, so Job chapter one, verse one. Job was a God-fearing father. Okay, so he's a, a man in the land of Uz. Uh, his name's Job. He was honest a person of absolute integrity. He feared God and avoided evil. And we saw, we see how, um, how keen he is about this. He loves his children and he offers sacrifices. Every time they gather, uh, he's concerned that they're going to offend God in some way. And, and so he offers uh, sacrifices for them to make up for anything that they, they may have done. Um, so this is the kind of man he is. 
Uh, this is the type of uh, businessman he'd be. Uh, he was very successful in his business because this is who he was. Uh, he was blessed by God because this is who he was. Uh, he was a great dad because this is this is who he was. So uh, then if we look at um, uh, Job 6 to 7, we, we, we have something really unique here. It's really fantastic. We have an insight into the unseen. There is a government in the unseen. Uh, there is a government. We know that because everything that is in this world is a poor reflection of what exists in the, in the kingdom of God. And, and so we have governments and there, there is a government system in the unseen. And we see here in verse 6 to 7, one day the divine beings came to, to present themselves before the Lord. And by this, um, I'm going to assume that they're referring to, to angels here. Uh, the adversary also came among them. Isn't that interesting? The Lord said to the adversary, where did you come from? The adversary answered the Lord from wandering throughout the earth. Why is he wandering throughout the earth? And why is he called the adversary? And who is this? Well, he is the accuser of brethren is, is what he's known as. Uh, he is um, known as, as Lucifer, as Satan. And he, he was kicked out. He was kicked out of the um, <clears throat> of the highest heaven, of the first heaven, if you want to refer to it that way, of of, of God's domain, of that of, of His place. Uh, he was removed from there because he tried to lead a, a rebellion. We're going to see that we uh, we see a lot of that in in Isaiah uh, going forward when we get there. Um, <clears throat> so here he is, and and he wanders around the earth. Why? Because he's there to accuse. He wants to point out, hey. Um, Creator, did you notice this? Uh, creator, did you notice that this person did this wrong? And, and so on. <clears throat> we understand now that he tries to trip us up so he can accuse us. So, so here he is, he, and he's answerable. Isn't that amazing? He was, he was removed. He was kicked out. He is, he is still rebellious. Uh, he's still an, an accuser, especially of the brethren. And, and the reason is uh, because he hates God. He hates God, but he's still answerable to him. <laughs> Interesting, isn't it? Okay. So now here's, here's some insight into our, our purpose, if you can understand this. In, in Job uh, chapter 1, verse 8, this is the insight into our purpose. And it says, the Lord said to the adversary, uh, have you thought about my servant Job? Surely there is no one like him on earth. A man who is honest, who is of absolute integrity, who reveres God and avoids evil. So why is he pointing this out? Well, it's simple. Because the, our purpose is actually to shame the adversary. Our purpose is to use our free will to worship Yahweh. Our free will. We choose to love him. We choose to worship him. We choose to bow down to him. The thing that the adversary refused to do, the thing that he failed to do, the thing that he got kicked out of, we, he, the, the creator is diminishing whatever authority he thinks he has, whatever authority the adversary has by our worship, by our praise. So he's pointing this out. Did you see? Did you see? Like, you're rotten to the core, but you see this? Look, look at Job. Look at him. There's no one like him on earth. A man who is honest, who is of, of absolute integrity, who reveres God and avoids evil. Hmm. There you go, people. So then we have, um, here we have the adversary doing his thing. And there's a reason that, that Satan absolutely hates us. Yeah, he hates us because this is our purpose, to shame him. Uh, our, our praise and our worship, is, is it shames him. And that's, so that's why he hates us. He, he wants to destroy that. So he turns around and, he, and it says in verse 9 uh, to 11, the adversary answered the Lord, does Job revere God for nothing? Haven't you fenced him in, his house and all he has, and blessed the work of his hands so that his possessions extend throughout the earth? But stretch out your hand and strike all he has. He will certainly curse you to your face. Now, 
That might seem really odd, right? But stop and think about it. What did the Apostle Paul say? He said he knew what it was uh, to have plenty, and he knew what it was to be in want, but he had discovered the secret of contentment. And the secret of contentment is relationship with God. That is the most important. There are blessings. <clears throat> blessings uh, can be for a period of time. Uh, they have purpose. He, he equips us in all the things uh, that he calls us into. Think, but things will come and, and things will go. And that we're not supposed to hold on to those. We hold on to the relationship. And so the adversary is saying that Job is not, he, he doesn't worship God because of the relationship. Uh, he worships him because of the toys, because of the possessions, because of these things. That's what, that's what he's accusing him of. I wonder if he accuses us of that. But when God turns around and gives him permission to strip all those things away from him, and, and Job loses all that, what happens? It's pie in the face of Satan. That's what it is. Because in verse 20 to 22, we see Job's reaction. Job arose tore his clothes because it's okay to mourn the morning uh the, there's i mean he just lost all his kids uh everything that he ever had it's gone there's a grieving process that you go through so he tore his clothes he shaved his head this is part of the grieving process this is part of what they did in their culture he fell to the ground and what did he do he worshiped he said naked i came from my mother's womb naked i will return there the lord has given the lord has taken bless the lord's name Bless the Lord's name. And all this, Job didn't sin or blame God. Yeah. Just try to drink that in there for a moment. Are we too attached to stuff? Yeah, okay, I'm not, yeah. It wasn't the only time, just before we, we go on to the to the friends and stuff, um, after he passes that test, if you want to refer to it as a test, Satan then, um, and, and the creator pointed out, you know, you look, look at Job. Did you see, did you see, did you see what he did? <laughs> yeah, pie in the face. Um, Satan turns around and, and he says, yeah, but he still has his health. Still has his health. He, he worships you. He reveres you because he still has his health. Strike his health. So God gives Satan permission to strike the health, but he says, but you can't take his life. And so Job is now, he's lost everything and he's, he's unwell, he's sick. And um, yeah, he's sitting in, in, in sackcloth and ashes. He's mourning and, and he's allowed to, you, you can mourn those things. Uh, but he, 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 even when his wife tells him, just get it over with, curse God and die. And, uh, Job says, woman you don't know what you're talking about because job had this incredible um insight and and relationship and he revered god so then we have job's three friends showing up and and here now begins the tale that we're going to look at for the next uh, 11 days really um a little less than that because we have we have god's re, uh, response to job um near the end as well um but he he has the friends showing up and, and this is going to give us a lot of insight. So his friends came to comfort him and they're shocked by what they see. This is how bad it is. In, in chapter two, verse 11 to 13, when Job's three friends heard about all this disaster that had happened to him, they came, each one from his home. Aliphaz from Teman, Bildad from Shua, and Zophar from Naaman. They agreed to come so they could console and comfort him. When they looked up from a distance and didn't recognize him, they didn't recognize him. Hey, have you have you ever had a friend who had cancer, and all that they that they go through with it, what that what the cancer does, what the chemo does, all that sort of stuff, uh, and maybe you haven't seen them for months, and you go and see them, and they just it just you you don't want to react, but you're just shocked by what you see. They didn't recognize him. They wept loudly these are his friends each one tore his garment and scattered dust above his head 
toward the sky. So they enter into the grief in the morning with him. They sat with Job on the ground seven days and seven nights. Look at the respect. Not speaking a word to him. For they saw that he was in excruciating pain. They waited on Job. They sat there with their friend in his misery and, and, and waited for him. That's, that's amazing. I know we give them a hard time, but that's friendship, people. So just listen, summing up, I'm just going to sum up three, four, and five just, just here, okay? Um, Job three, this is Job's response. Um, and in his response was that he could no longer see any purpose for his life. Everything's gone. He, he doesn't know what he's there for anymore. Uh, the, you know, what's he supposed to do? How's he supposed to be, re react? How, how can he go on? Um, he didn't need instructions from his friends. He, he's, he's confessing how he's feeling here. He's confessing his lostness. He's confessing this. And he, he doesn't need instruction from them. There's, there's sometimes, and I have to remind myself this all the time, my, my, my wife will sometimes talk to me and she's not looking for me to solve the problem. She just needs to talk to me. She just needs to talk. She needs me to sit there in the dirt with her in that moment without any solutions. And just my presence, just being with her is comfort. And that's all she wants from me. So he didn't, he, he really didn't need instructions from his friends. He needed to know that there was hope in a future. He needed them to speak words of hope into him and, and speak about the future. That, that's what he needed to hear. He just lost all of his kids. Forget the business. He just lost all of his kids. So then... In chapter four, it's um, Eliphaz is, is going to respond to Job now because Job has spoken. The door is open now for them to enter into this. And, and they think they're going to bring comfort to him. They think they're going to give him what he needs, but they're giving him instruction. Uh, there's, no, there's no comfort that's offered here. There's no, there's no hope. There's no, no future. There's, there's ifs. If you do this, then this may happen. If you do this, this may happen. Um, and, and in here, uh, his friend accuses him of, of empty words. In other words, in the past, Job was the one who provided comfort for people. He was the one who spoke words of hope for people. Um, but they're saying now that his words are empty because he can't even apply them to himself. It, it's hard to apply words to yourself. There are seasons that you just need people to come along and speak those words into your life. Uh, and they accuse him of a false religion, that uh, all that he did amounted to, to nothing whatsoever, because look at where he was. Um, and he also turns around and accuses Job of sin. That's why you're in this mess, because, because you sinned, because you offended God. That's, that's why you're in this, which is not the truth. You've got to keep that as we go through this. Keep that in your mind. It isn't the truth. Job didn't sin. sin. He, was, he was being... He, he, was, uh, his, he was living out his purpose of bringing shame to the adversary. Now in Job 5, his friend continues to go on. And uh, I, I'm not going to break that down, but what I do want to point out is just highlight a few things here that we, we discover in, in, in what is being said. It's being misapplied, but, but it, it's still truth. Um, you know, truth misapplied is still a mess, but at the same time, this still reveals to us. And that's what we're doing with Job is, is looking at what they knew about God. It still reveals to us what they, they knew about God. They knew that he protects the innocent and he punishes the wicked. Uh, they knew that, that life and death were found in him. They, they knew he is powerful, the most powerful, that there's no power on the earth that could compare to the creator. And he is the only measuring rod of righteousness. Everything, all morality, all righteousness, everything has to be weighed or measured against him. And hu humanity 
the, the only reaction humanity can have in his presence is humility that there's nothing that we have to offer him and and uh and and he is everything so that that's what we learn from this so you can see it's quite it, it's fantastic because there's, there's people today who don't know that much about the creator and, and I, what's important for you to understand and what I want you to hold on to is that this is not where we are. Okay. Uh, Yahweh is dad to us. He is father. Jesus is our king, our big brother. Uh, he is the firstborn. Uh, we, we are in, in the family, the royal. We're part of the royal priesthood. We are part of that family. We have such intimacy. We know our father because Jesus has revealed the father to us. Uh, so we're not in this place. But the problem is that a lot of people live the New Old Testament. They, they, they just, they, they, they have done what the, the Jews tried to do in, in the beginning of the church. Uh, convert you to, to, to be a Jew first before you can be a Christian. And, and that's what a, a lot of uh, people have done is they've signed up uh, to the Old Testament um, and they try, they try to live the new covenant according to the old covenant. Hmm. We don't want to go there. So I don't want you to get stuck with this. This is a learning process. This is us discovering who, who they saw creator is as, as, the creator will reveal himself over the next little while. And, and, and the reason I'm emphasizing this is gonna, I'm gonna point it out as we go along, how he reveals a little bit more of himself as, as we go along. Um, so I'll hold on to that. Thank you for being patient with me as we unpack this. Um, don't give up on Job. I, I know it's hard to read through Job, but I'm just, I'm asking to stick with us. Don't set it aside and then join us when we get back to Genesis. There, there is value here. I'm telling you, there is value here. You guys be blessed. Have a really fantastic day. Uh, I'm glad you're here with me.